Lap splice connectors are a system that provides for deliberate field bending. These are proprietary prefabricated plastic or metal boxes or strips of foam containing prefabricated anchorage and lap splice reinforcement. The assembly is attached to the inside of the form prior to concrete placement. Then, after the forms are stripped, the encased or box lap splice reinforcement is exposed. Then the pre-bent lap splice bars are field straightened with a pipe and or hickey. Another proprietary product called a dowel bar connector is available which avoids the field straightening of embedded dowels. The connector consists of a female sleeve with a bent dowel connected to it. The sleeve is attached to the inside of the form. This end is stripped, a cap is removed, and a bar with one threaded end is screwed into the embedded sleeve to become the dowel continuation. Section 12.1 of the ACI 318 code states that splice lengths depend on several factors. According to ACI 318 requirements in Chapter 12, splice length factors include concrete strength, steel grade, bar spacing, concrete cover, and location of the bar. In Chapter 1 of ACI 318, the code states that the design drawings shall show the length and location of splices. The ACI 315 standard repeats this requirement and instructs the detailer to follow the architect engineer's detail. Thus, both the placing drawings and the design drawings should agree on the location and length of the lap splices. The inspector is only responsible for ensuring that the placement of reinforcing steel meets the splice length and location determined by the engineer and shown on the contract and placing drawings. When multiple bars are spliced at the same section, the minimum clear spacing between lap splices in beams is one bar diameter, D, or one inch. In columns, it's 1.5 D, or one and a half inches. Lap splices can be contact or non-contact. For a lap splice to be acceptable, it's not necessary for the bars to be in contact with one another. The contact splice is most commonly used by the iron worker because it's efficient and holds the bars rigidly in place. The non-contact lap splice usually is used in slab and wall construction and is acceptable provided that the clear distance between the bars to be spliced does not exceed one-fifth the specified lap length or six inches maximum. The ACI 318 code prohibits lap splices for bar sizes number 43 and number 57 except when in compression, only to number 35 and smaller bars. The lap length for number 35 bars and sometimes smaller diameter bars often requires lap splice lengths that are impractically long, causing congestion at the splice locations, which sometimes makes placement of concrete difficult. For these reasons, in certain applications, mechanical splices may be more advantageous and perhaps more economical than lap splices. CRSI's publication, Reinforcement Anchorages and Blices, describes various proprietary connectors available. There are two general types of proprietary mechanical splice devices. Connectors used to transfer tension and or compression forces, and end-bearing devices used for compression only requirements. Section 1.2.1 of the ACI 318 code states that design drawings shall show the type and location of mechanical splices of reinforcement. The supplier providing the mechanical splice will, upon request, provide the inspection agency with the manufacturer's pertinent technical data and installation procedures. This might include information about whether the end preparation of the bars may or must be flame cut, shear cut, or saw cut. The inspector is responsible for determining that the mechanical splices used are approved by the architect or engineer and of assuring that they are installed at the locations determined by the architect or engineer and shown on the contract drawings. Inspection of the installation of the connector should make certain that the iron workers have followed the manufacturer's recommended procedures.